Hi guys. Okay, so back for part two. So I took my black paint spray painted border and I just glued it down to my board and then I glued in all the inside pieces. And I'm really happy with it. I love the colors. It's gonna look so cute. So I didn't put in the white snow yet. There's a couple reasons for that. I'll get back to that later. For now, I'm just gonna skip ahead to liquid glass. So this is what the old bottle looked like. And this is what it looks like now. This is a new bottle. Um, just so there's no confusion if you see it on the website. I buy it from Dick Blick Art Supply Stores. You can only buy it at two places in the US, Dick Blick and Premium Artist Supply. It's a Canadian company and it's a little bit hard to find right now, but um, this is just what I prefer using. You can also use glossy accents or Mod Podge three-dimensional, but I think this is a little bit thicker and just a better product for what I like to do. So I just put it in a cup. I don't pour a lot because it does thicken up as you're going along. So um, let's see, I want to zoom in here so that you can really see what I'm doing. Let's start, I think I'm going to start, well I usually like to start on one end and work my way across because I, you know, will put my arm in it. So I just like to Make sure I'm working on this. Let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit better. Sorry guys. Just wanna make sure you can really see what I'm doing. Okay, hopefully that's good. Okay, so I pull in a lot on my brush. It's a big drip, it's really, not painting it on, it's just dropping and moving it. So I pull in a good amount. Start in one area and I'm really just kind of pushing and pulling it where I want to go. This is a little bit too big of a brush. I usually have a few brushes close by, but I'm just going to make this work. Make sure you can see. Okay, so my eyesight's really not great, so I'm trying to make sure I can do this and record it. So again, I'm pulling in a good drop. I like to put it in the middle and then I am just going to sort of push it to where I want it to go. You want to make sure you're getting to a nice clean edge. If you see any bubbles, you can just sort of push them out. I really need to lean in here. You want to make sure you're getting really nicely on the edges because when it dries, you can tell if there's any breaks in your lines, any little small gaps. Okay, so when I have a corner like that, that's really tight, I'll use a little weeding tool, even a toothpick, and I'm just gonna make sure I'm getting it perfectly to my edges. It's kind of filling in. You have time, it doesn't dry immediately, but you do want to be kind of quick. And I like to kind of stay, oh my hands are shaky for some reason. Okay. I'm just kind of dabbing and pushing. The coverage to me is kind of important. I like to have it really perfect on my edges.
especially with a black border like this because you can see it. When I do a gold border, it's a little bit more forgiving. Just pushing and pulling it. I kind of drag it when I have a corner like this and pull a good amount in a straight line and then go back and fix my edges if I need to. It's okay if you have too much on your brush, you just kind of let it go where it needs to go. It's very self-leveling, so as it dries, this is going to um, dry to a nice even layer. It should, if you put enough on, it should dry really smoothly. And again, just working on getting to those edges. I can see over here I miss these edges and I hope I'm getting to them in time. Sometimes if you don't do it right away and it's already started to set, you will see, it looks like it's gonna be fine. You will see a ridge there, so you do kind of want to just work on one area at a time. Again, here I did the same thing. I'm being a little messier than I normally am. Okay. And I'm really excited about painting these trees with liquid gloss because like I said, it does change the color sometimes of your paint. So I love the color I get with it. It gives you such a nice depth. To the paint. So I don't really want to pull into there because I don't want to get it on my border. I'm just going to use my tool. This is just a little weeding tool. But you can use a toothpick. I even have some like little dental pick looking things I got at Harbor Freight. Those are great. Okay, that piece looks great. So I'm going to move on to the next piece. Just dripping it in there, get a nice big amount. Don't mind my hands, they're covered in paint and I've been doing mulch all day and gardening, so my hands are a wreck right now. Okay, so you can see I'm avoiding going here right now. I'm going to use my tool because I do want this to be really perfect. So I'm going to put a little extra here. Actually, maybe I can do it with my brush. Being really careful and that's almost perfect but I have to get right to this inner tiny corner getting to my edges okay so that looks good Pulling more on, just letting it drip. You can see I don't really get any bubbles. I don't know, some people have said they have problems with bubbles, but I, I just don't. I don't, 
hardly ever get any in there. And when I see one, it's just so easy to grab your weeding tool and just kind of drag it to the edge or your toothpick or whatever. Just getting to all my edges. And I can see I have a little fuzzy here. I'm gonna make sure that's not in there. It really would drive me crazy if I finished a piece and I saw a little piece of dust or a hair or anything in there. I would actually probably start it completely over. I just don't like that. a little bubble there. I'm just going to drag it out. Here's one. After I just said I don't have problems with bubbles, I get two. Okay. So, I'm going to fix my edges here. Just dabbing. It will pull itself there. You're just sort of guiding it that direction. Okay. Whoops, that was a close one. Getting as close to the edge as I can before I use my tool. Whoa, that was a little bit much. This is just a sign I'm testing. It's just a new design I did. If this was for a customer, I would be super, super careful. I'm being a little bit speedy trying to get this video done so I'm not being quite as careful as I usually am if you get a little bit on your paint just use your fingernail and wipe it off I'm gonna probably go back because the paint is matte and the stuff is glossy it might leave a little tiny bit of difference in the texture there I would just go back and touch that up after no big deal. So I'm not going to finish this in the interest of time. I want to move on to this piece and then um, I'll probably pause and just finish it up and come back to it. Okay, let's make sure you can see and move on to this piece. in a nice big drip. This is a little bit um, thick. This bottle I've had for about three years, so it's getting to the end of its life. And I still have quite a bit in the bottle. I'm trying to use up um, before I open up some of my new bottles. I bought a really big bottle of it. That's what this one is. I probably wouldn't do that the next time because um, it does get a tiny bit thick when you've had it for a while. I think it's probably better to have a smaller bottle and use it up before that happens.
know, it's kind of weird over here. It's like this piece is really indented for some reason. Touching up my edges. Dragging it right into that corner. I put on such an excess of it. It's almost like the piece couldn't take much more without spilling out, but it never does. I think that the way I draw my images with this thick border, it really kind of provides a natural barrier and it just never really spills out unless I'm making a mistake and dragging it out. But the piece really can take a lot of liquid glass. Okay, over here I... This piece is weird right here. I don't know why the wood's so indented there. Okay, that's pretty good. There's a tiny bubble over here I want to get rid of. Move it around until it's right out at the edge. It's a stubborn one. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and just carry on and finish it. I don't want this video to get too long, but I do want to show you just the color. You know, you can really see here. Let me move my camera. So you can really see the differences between the unpainted part here and the painted. Whoops, I'm making a drip. Oh shoot. Wow, I messed that up. I shouldn't have lifted it, but you I'm gonna fix this. You can see, I guess I will carry on, um, how it does change the paint color. I think it's because, for a couple of reasons, with wood, especially laser cut wood, it's pulling in some of that char from the edges. So, that's a big reason why I didn't put my white pieces in yet. Um, white is really hard to work with, I find, with liquid glass. Sometimes I can get it perfect. And that's usually by spray painting it and then hitting those edges as much as you can with spray paint to kind of give it a barrier, some protection covering up some of that char and um, that will help avoid bringing, changing your white to almost a toasty brown. I don't really, sometimes I like it, it depends what I'm working on, but obviously if I want it really super white, I'll either avoid using liquid glass on that piece or I'll just work a lot harder to protect my paint by, you know, hitting the edges. And that has worked for me. I did a design that was um, for a customer. She wanted big clouds um, with a rainbow. So I wanted those clouds completely white. 
and it actually worked pretty well, but honestly, I usually avoid using liquid gloss on white. It's just a lot of trouble sometimes. So I messed this up by lifting it when it was still wet and it dripped, but it's okay because I'm gonna be able to fix this area. And I actually like that it's pulling in some of the char here. It's gonna be really pretty. So that was um, a mistake that's gonna work out. could be using my weeding tool to get in that corner, but I'm just trying to be too quick here. Okay, so this is what I, I'm going to do to fix that. I'm gonna take my weeding tool Get a baby wipe and wipe off any glass that was on there. First, I'm going to fix this corner and fix these edges. I need more in here. Okay, so that's better. Fixed all my edges. Now this area, I'm just going to keep, I should, I'm just going to keep pulling it and wiping it off. I really never get onto the border like this, but since I did, I just want to show you how easy it is to fix. Just wiping. Pulling off any of this excess. I'm just going to keep doing this until I have all of this removed. And then when I'm done and I get all of this off and I let it dry, I'll just go in there with a tiny paintbrush and some matte black paint. And you won't even be able to tell. Okay, so I'm just gonna work on fixing my mistake here and I'm going to come back and show you the finished result and also to talk about what I ended up doing with the white pieces, the snow at the bottom.